And the next presenter will be Katarina Marinetti from the New Wave Project. And Katarina holds a master's degree in civil engineering, uh, water resources management from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, uh, which has been complemented by master's studies in cultural anthropology and development sociology at Leiden University. And also she has a, B a Bachelor of Science degree in environmental engineering from the University of Rome in La Sapienza, with one year abroad at Granada University in Spain. She's currently working as the scientific project manager at the Institute for Environmental Studies in a university whose name I will never be able to pronounce in Dutch, but it's, I believe it's the Vrij Universiteit in Amsterdam for the EU funded Marie Curie Innovative Training Network, New Wave. At IVM, Katharina recently started her PhD investigating the status quo of tertiary educational pro programs that focus on water governance, an especially interesting and vital subject with particular interest for aspects such as inter and transdisciplinarity, co-production, transformative and transgressive learning, and frameworks such as the United Nations Education for Sustainable Development. So Katharina, let me pass the word over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Can you hear me well? can hear you perfectly. Fantastic. And you also see my presentation, right? And we can also see your presentation. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, so thank you for your uh, kind introduction. And especially thanks also to the organizers of this session and uh, for uh, inviting me here and also for the calls and collaboration we already experienced. Uh, it was a very positive experience, I must say. And of course, also welcome to all the colleagues that are um, connected today. So we try to be uh, brief, uh, short and sweet. And so to introduce New Wave, uh, New Wave is an innovative training network that is funded by the uh, European Horizon 2020 program. Specifically, it is uh, Marie Rodoska Curie Action. And the project started in uh, late uh, 2019, and with a six months project extension, we will be ending by mid 2024. So we are in the second year of uh, the project now. The coordinator is based at the Fry University in Amsterdam and uh, under the responsibility of Jean-Pierre Delangelo, who's sending his uh, best regards. The objective of this uh, uh, network is uh, uh, to respond to urgent social environmental necessities that call, as we all know, for an increased action from multiple actors, and these include scientists, policymakers, communities and private companies. In particular, science, uh, scientists have a very important role to forge the best possible knowledge and, of course, to communicate with all the other actors uh, uh, that are involved in uh, these matters. Then it has also the purpose of push the heuristic and epistemological front, frontiers of the water governance scientific status quo, but also challenge the policy status quo through, uh, through a systematic approach that mixes uh, interdisciplinary theoretical co-production. And I think it's nice that we have already seen the uh, synergies with uh, the, the interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approach that FASTER has, and also integration of multi-sectoral perspective and empirical contextualized evidence. How do we do that? Uh, so our approach, our approach is to bring together an, uh, a network of uh, excellent transdisciplinary and transnational water governance organization, so we can count on the participation of 10 beneficiaries in the project, plus uh, 33 partners, uh, partner organizations from all over the world, and we are happy to say that we are also growing on more new partners now. Then we are also training, uh, and this is, I think, the main, uh, the main uh, uh, focus of our network is to train the new generation of water governance early stage researchers. In uh, the specific, we have 15 early stage researchers that are hired under New Wave in the 10 different uh, uh, beneficiaries. And uh, they are uh, also enrolled in three years of PhD programs uh, at the host institution. And what do we want to do with uh, the, uh, what do we want to create? Which opportunity do we want to offer to these uh, uh, researchers? We want to ensure that they have the, the skills to make the significant contribution to both the academic 
but also the extra academic water governance world. So it is important to say that in our network, we are not only focusing in academic institutions, but we have consultancies, NGOs, uh, civil society representation. So it is a, a, a truly a transdisciplinary uh, network. Um, the work of the researchers uh, will involve to develop uh, and uh, um, implement a cutting edge actionable research uh, agenda with, of course, uh, actionable outputs as well. And on what, uh, what we said on the water governance priority and insights for future direction. Um, talking about uh, the, the research approach that we have, New Wave approaches the challenge of water governance from uh, three uh, different angles that are, of course, uh, um, interrelated. And these are the problematics, the paradigm path, pattern of water governance, what we call the uh, P, uh, the three P's heuristic framework. And for this information, I, um, I would like to invite you to visit our website for knowing a bit more about the, um, the research background. So to go to the results and to what we have already achieved, uh, we have successfully completed the recruitment of the, the 15 early stage researchers, and we have successfully also carried out the five different training activities. Some of them were open to the public, others were just internal for uh, the development and the career uh, advance of uh, our researchers. And uh, as Annalise was already said, I think uh, uh, a very key activity that we um, that we ran was the e-lecture series on water governance theoretical perspectives that lasted two months. And so the participation of around 500 um, people um, per lecture, and um, it was about 20 lectures. And now we are working on the creation of an online course that we hope we can share open source uh, um, with uh, all uh, as soon as possible. And we also conducted a methodological training on research, a summit on the project research agenda, a series of seminars on co-production, and also a breeding workshop uh, to face uh, stress during uh, academic, uh, the academic journey, but also to help uh, during uh, presentations. We also successfully um, participated in three international events, namely the World Water Week uh, in 2020, the, Delft, the first Delft Social Hydrology Conference, that it was uh, a first international event that was organized in this, uh, um, in this uh, um, uh, uh, topic, and also uh, the participation of the Development Sociology Congress in Ferrara. We established a, a platform for communication and dissemination that, of course, we also want to uh, improve and advance uh, uh, as much as possible. And we are onboarding as European Climate Pact ambassador. And I am the uh, responsible person for that uh, and representing a new wave in this uh, um, context. What do we foresee? So we are still uh, working on the organization of uh, the virtual labs and open seminars on uh, the three, pre, three piece framework that I was uh, mentioning uh, before. And we will also plan a summer school next year in June on transferable, actionable, and dissemination skills for our researchers. We are, uh, of course, uh, working also on the scientific publication on water governance, uh, problematics, paradigms, uh, and uh, patterns um, produced both by individual researchers, but also as a group. And uh, what uh, in our actionable outputs, we also have a list of uh, uh, papers and uh, reports, including a policy science synthesis report that will lead to a policy web paper, a white paper on participatory water governance, and of course, a number of products, including a water governance massive online open source course, a toolbox for water governance, interactive atlas, a documentary, and a podcast series. All of this, uh, of course, will need uh, more than uh, our presentation for each product, but we hope that we can launch them soon um, and then uh, uh, see uh, the contribution of all our partners in that. And we are also organizing a final conference similar to this uh, uh, one that we are um, attending today and a job fair in Brussels. And of course, the final PhD awards of our early stage researchers. 
In conclusion, what are the needs that we are still working on? So in terms of scientific knowledge, we uh, want to produce tough provoking knowledge, challenging the status quo of the water governance debate. So of course, uh, uh, going beyond what's already uh, said and trying to really uh, revert uh, the, the, the trends that are commonly known and boost the interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary aspect of the project and specifically their evaluation. And I think uh, uh, today we got very good uh, insights from the previous speakers also on evaluating and monitoring uh, uh, such types of uh, programs and ensuring career development and advancement of early stage researchers and the prospect for future jobs because uh, we also want to focus on professionalization, so not to leave what we did uh, um, standing uh, um, as something that would not have continuation, but ensure that the researchers will find their space and uh, make the uh, change that we hope to produce. And then, of course, increase the engagement of non-academic partners and innovative tools, uh, specifically through communication and dissemination uh, efficiency. What can we offer? So in terms of offering, of course, the knowledge, so um, everybody's welcome to participate in the selected training events, so uh, the ones that are open and public, but also uh, to uh, send their expression of interest in case there are particular aspects of the projects uh, of the project or individual projects that uh, they are interested, interested in. In terms of equipment, all the uh, products that I've mentioned before will be open source, including the online courses, uh, the publications, the media material, and we are very happy to share it uh, uh, with other networks uh, um, as well to enhance uh, our uh, common activities and synergies. In terms of infrastructure, the platform of New Wave uh, are available for uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge exchange and also experience exchange and also to repost on case studies and, uh, and uh, share as much as possible the good practices and best practices and other insights from other projects. And of course, this is also specifically in the interest of uh, the, my PhD that focuses on, on uh, uh, education for water governance at higher, um, at, uh, the, sec the tertiary education, so at university level. And we are always open for collaboration opportunities uh, in this uh, arena of uh, um, water governance uh, and innovative training uh, programs. With this said, I think I concluded my presentation. I hope to be in time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Katharina. Uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, initiative that you're representing there. Uh, very close to my heart as well with regards to, for example, uh, the inclusion of youth, uh, the engagement, uh, shall we say, at a broad level within uh, water, water policy creation. And you're also demonstrating something which is also very important. And indeed, all the speakers today have demonstrated this the importance of scientists to be able to communicate what they're doing. And I think that everybody this morning is demonstrating very clearly how that is possible and how that's so important so that broader sectors of society can understand the importance of the research that all of you guys are carrying out. And then uh, not only that, but become engaged because they become interested in what's being spoken. So well done and congratulations and thank you very, very much. The next speaker is also very much engaged uh, in the subject of youth and uh, water, uh, water policy creation. She's somebody who I've had the pleasure of uh, collaborating with over the last three or four years. Naomi Tima holds. She's been active for almost 10 years in water management sector as a program manager for several personal development programs in the Dutch water sector, and she's been very successful at doing that. Uh, Naomi applied for her unique multidisciplinary vision to develop the European Junior Water Program and started many collaborations to create and share knowledge within a European context over the last two and a half years. She's focused on making connections and bringing water sector a step forward in supporting the human factor uh, when, when uh, regarding uh, water as a 
as a whole. So Naomi, welcome and over to you. Thank you, Richard, for this nice introduction of you. Uh, and um, uh, thank you so much for having me on, on this conference. Um, I'm going to quickly take you, uh, also in case of time, uh, to our program, the European Junior Water Program, which we created from the perspective of, um, of the whole value chain of water, uh, together with uh, Water Europe. Uh, we noticed a couple of years ago the, the lack of uh, yeah, well, young professional community for the upcoming challenges that we have, the ways that we really can connect and learn together uh, from the different organizational views uh, and how, how we can bring them really together, uh, but also how to empower those young professionals to, to take up the next step uh, within the water community and beyond that. Um, so with that said, um, I will uh, uh, first always try to start with a um, with a um, with a video, uh, and then I always have to be very careful with Zoom indeed to not have a silent video. Uh, so I hope it works. Um, the sound should be shared now as well. So let's see if it works. Climate change, new technologies, big data, and cyber threats. Employer brand. The water sector needs new and tailored skills to handle tomorrow's water challenges. We need to involve the future, the young professionals. So how can we bind them to enter and stay in the sector? How can we train and equip them to use and share their knowledge? And how do we bring them together to closer cooperate within and outside the sector? The European Junior Water Programme offers employers within the water management sector an opportunity to empower their junior professionals to bring a wealth of knowledge, skills and networking power to their organisation. It is an excellent way to create a network with other European water management organisations and strengthen your employer brand. Moreover, it provides you the opportunity to have a team of participants work on an integrated and tailor-made solution for a specific challenge your organization faces. Innovation was never more ready at hand. The European Junior Water Programme is a two-year part-time programme to prepare junior professionals for leadership in European water management. Join the program to learn about transcultural communication and cooperation and to develop your knowledge on European water policies, water footprint, and create a unique network within the European context. The European Junior Water Program is a unique opportunity to boost your career in European water management. Enrolling one or several of your junior professionals is a valuable investment in the future growth of your organization. It saves time and resources needed to develop or run your own training program. Join the program and work together on a water smart society in Europe. For more information about our program and the qualification requirements, please visit juniorwaterprogram.eu. Oh, that was the very quick version, and I could almost say, so now I'm done. This video has been made um, just when COVID started, because that was when we were just launched. Um, so we had to try to talk to the organizations and to the young professionals in a different way. Um, and what you noticed in the video is that we not only try to speak to the young professionals to encourage them to take up that next step, but also to the organizations, because we believe that they're both partner in this, um, because we need each other to make those transformations that are needed. Um, so that's why we talk to both the benefits for the organization, as well as for the young professionals itself. If we're looking to what we have so far, it's the two-year program. Uh, and um, as you saw on the first slide, we have three main pillars. It's the networking um, and giving the right surrounding to create and boost your career. Um, it's the knowledge transfer uh, and knowledge creation, which we do together within projects uh, from the different kind of organizations. Um, and we try to learn from and with each other what you're doing to the different 
types of knowledge with the different types of knowledge. What do you do with them? How do you use them uh, in practical sense? And what are the challenges you're facing? And of course, in the project, we try to find solutions for the different participating organizations as well in uh, a collective approach uh, and um, to learn how to work on interdisciplinary projects as well. Uh, and we try that. And our third uh, pillar is the training and professional um, skills development program, uh, and in which we try to encourage and motivate uh, people to train new skills. Uh, and then we really focus on personal skills. So how do I lead myself? How do I communicate uh, in an inter intercultural approach? Uh, but also uh, how do you get, for example, from just collaboration to co-creation? What does that need to for us? What's needed for us in, in behavioral side um, to become more effective and more efficient in achieving our goals? Um, the partners so far, as you can see, are um, a mixture of all the different types of organizations that we have and we need um, to collaborate and to become effective in the water sector. Is this all running my time, Richard? You've got about a minute, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, then I will skip your picture. That was your message. Just put to the other slide. Okay. Well, then the pictures of the of the participants. That's much nicer. Um, because we we finally have live pictures again, uh, and we're done with the screen pictures. Um, we had a, a training week again, a live one in uh, in the Netherlands. And what we do with a pro with a uh, with a group is visit each other's organizations over the two year time, and learn from and with the organization, what's going on in their surrounding. Um, and for example, you see us at the beach, uh, that's the beach in The Hague, and we did a beach cleanup because it was beach cleanup day. Uh, and uh, we not only do things with our head, but we also do it, we have not <laughs> noticed that we also need our whole body. So we did some exercises um, and we learned at the same time about the dunes and about how everything developed. Uh, and at the other side, you see, the other events we went to, uh, which we try to connect the program with. So we learn as a whole, not just by knowledge transfer, not just by training, not just by creating the network, but to make it a full story because we need our whole body to collaborate and to be part of the new transformation. Um, we're um, starting new groups um, every time. Um, so we're always looking for participants. Uh, and with that said, not only from young professional side, but also the organizations we see as uh, participants as well, because we can look at all the young people to, to change the world, but we need everyone to do it. So, um, well, let us connect um, and bring it together. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much, Naomi. Uh, you'd obviously have excellent, excellent taste in your ambassadors, uh, but I haven't been yet invited to go to the beach. Um, I know that I'm a bald 60 year old man, so I'm probably not a great example for the European youth uh, of water. But having said that, the next time I'll be insisting on an invitation to a beach with you guys. Okay. You're Thank most you. welcome. <laughs> Thanks very much, Naomi. Presenting Water Agri, we have uh, uh, Miklas Schultz. Uh, Miklas, uh, as I said before, has a very impressive CV. He is a professor at the Water Resources Engineering at Lund University, and he also holds the chair in civil engineering at the University of Salford in the UK. Um, not only is he there in Sweden and in the UK, but he's also a distinguished professor at the Johannesburg University and also at the Central University of Technology. So Miklas, I presume, spends a lot of time in a pre-COVID period at least, traveling from one place to another. His main research areas are treatment wetlands, integrated constructed wetlands, sustainable flood retention basins, permeable pavement systems, decision support systems, ponds, and capillary such and time. And it's a pleasure to finally be able to welcome Miklas. Over to you. Richard, thank you very much for the very kind, uh, kind introduction. Um, uh, the reason why I look a bit rough today is because I'm officially on holiday and I'm renovating at the moment a house and uh, sleeping a bit rough here. So sorry about this. The other problem is I have to speak very fast because I have only about 13% left 
in terms of energy. So therefore, I will not waste a minute and will uh, go straight into, into the presentation. Um, I have the pleasure to present Water Aqui, which uh, uh, stands for Water Retention and Nutrient Recycling in Soils and Streams for Improved Agricultural Production. And it's a Horizon uh, 2020 uh, project. And we're now almost one and a half years uh, 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 going uh, of a four years project uh, in Twitter. And I'm very uh, happy to say that there are also other people here today who are also part of uh, uh, of what Agri, for example, Attilio in uh, from the University of, of Bologna. So what are now the objectives of water Agri? They are to co-develop the links between agriculture, land and soil sediment water management, and to undertake technical and sustainability assessments of proposed measures, and also to develop a cloud-based simulation and data assimilation system, and to identify, develop, and test affordable and easy to implement farm solutions and to assess techniques for the potential regarding adaptation to climate change. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, dissemination of uh, our implemented uh, innovations. So I'm co coordinating uh, this uh, project, uh, which is uh, has a price tag of 4 million uh, euros. You can see more information on our webpage, www.waterac.eu. And then we have uh, 23 partners which include uh, um, uh, Lund University as the coordinator, Eden in France, FZJ in, um, in Germany, VTT in Finland, U University of Depeschem in Hungary, Alchemia Nova in uh, Vienna, and Acro Egeo in Hungary, Boku also in Vienna, Austria, and Unibo in um, Italy, University of Salford in the UK, CER and CDR, uh, uh, CDR are both communication uh, um, um, organizations, uh, both in, uh, uh, in Italy and in uh, Poland, respectively. Then we have Innocence from Serbia, Wolves, we have uh, BZN uh, in Hungary, Vultus uh, in uh, uh, fin, uh, in, in the south of Sweden, uh, Technical University of Delft. Uh, then we have Unine in Switzerland, Gottstag Nygard, one of our farms, uh, but also our partner in Sweden, Ulu in uh, uh, Finland, Akrikolos in Italy, which is uh, um, uh, which provides numerical solutions uh, to farmers, in Rai in France, and finally uh, Regelsberger also in Austria. So um, the project is from 2020 to 24. Uh, keywords are agriculture, water management, innovation, and nutrient recycling. So um, here you see three uh, uh, graphics. Uh, the first one at the top left shows you the framework, the, our modeling framework, followed by innovative and sustainable water retention solutions. And then we have nutrient uh, recovery solutions. The framework uh, uh, modeling includes the framework itself but it also includes physically based terrestrial models, decision support tools, and individual uh, models like, uh, for example, a water vapor, sorption isotherm, and a uh, WebJS for zone landscape matrix, and also serious gaming. And then in our two areas, uh, the first one, uh, sustainable water management, we have uh, constructed wetlands, we have remote sensing, we have irrigation ma management solutions, we have precision irrigation systems, we have enhanced uh, water product retainer, we have biochar, tracer methods, and uh, the dewaterability estimation test. And in the second part of the project, uh, we look at nutrient recovery solutions. There we have again uh, our farm constructed wetlands, but this time not for uh, water management purposes, but for nutrient recovery. We have drainage systems, bio-based nutrient collection membranes, biochar, but this time for nutrient absorption and microfluidics. So what we have we achieved is so far and uh, what is foreseen in terms of our results and uh, success, success stories, we have established uh, two pilots in Finland and one in a uh, pilot each in Sweden, Germany, France, Poland, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Italy. We have tested uh, for the first year now several wa uh, water aqua solutions. Uh, the ones which I've just presented on the previous slide, we've improved, improved water uh, regulation for farming. We have developed an automatic drainage systems. We determine a uh, drought stress responses uh, of plants to optimize irrigation. We also uh, maintain high level of food production through intelligent water soil nutrient management solutions. And we've optimized uh, irrigation water retention uh, and agriculture drainage water treatment uh, systems and also uh, nutrient recovery solutions. 
what will uh, we be doing uh, in the future? Uh, moving our water aqua innovations closer to the market, improving the planting sequence of uh, and field management. We also need to adjust crop rotation, nutrient management, control drainage and wetland technology. And we need to investigate water flows on the farm level for improvement of irrigation of different crops. And finally, a reduction of artificial fertilizers to adapt to climate change and a reduction of available conventional water resources. So now comes uh, the last slide, opportunities and for networking. So what are our needs? We are always in need of more solutions for agricultural water management and nutrient recycling. And we're very happy to hear from you on this matter. Also more case studies would be good. At the moment, we are focusing in terms of case studies on boreal climate and on continental climate and Hungarian climate, or also called Pannonian climate. And uh, we would like to widen uh, our experience in other case studies in other re regions. We uh, would like to ensure economic growth for end users, such as farmers, innovation providers. And we would also like to involve more stakeholders within the consortium. So what do we offer? Uh, you're very welcome to join our Enables Advisory Board. Then you're very much at the, at the center of what goes on. We, uh, we also um, would like uh, more people to join our local farm, uh, regional clusters, national and international uh, stakeholder events. Also uh, implement uh, solutions uh, on other farms and involve uh, and support other stakeholders with our research innovations and to provide bespoke presentations, workshops, PhD, PhD courses. There's an upcoming one now in, in Finland at Ulu and living lab experiences. And uh, also uh, we offer arrangements uh, for internships. So I think when I'm uh, correct, yeah, that is the last slide. So I stop sharing and back to you, Richard. Thank you very much and all the success uh, for, for, for the rest of the meeting. And thank and, you for uh, again, us Thank as you well, very much Nicholas. for inviting us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, ciao. Bye-bye, take good care Thank of you yourself. Work. And now we pass over to Attilio uh, Toscano from the University of Bologna, who's going to be presenting Fit for, uh, fit for Reuse. Uh, Attilio holds a PhD in environmental engineering at the University of Palermo, and also a master's in uh, water resources management at Scuola Superiore di Catania in Italy. I do apologize for my pronunciation in Italian. He's a full professor of agricultural hydraulics and watershed protection at the University of Bologna. His research activity is mainly focused on sustainable agricultural water management, precision irrigation, uh, constructed wetlands for wastewater treatment and wastewater reuse in agriculture. He has been and indeed is involved in several national and European projects as a work package leader or as a coordinator. And he is also an advisor of national agencies and ministries. Attilio, you are very welcome and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Could you hear me? It's... We can hear you fine and we can see your presentation. OK, thank, thanks a lot. First of all, I would like to thank the FASTER Consortium for the invitation to join the final conference. It was really well appreciated. Today, I will share with you the, the project named the Fit for Reuse that stands for Safe and Sustainable Solutions for the Integrated Use of Non-Conventional Water Resources in the Mediterranean Agricultural Sector. Sorry for the title, is a little bit long, but the, the acronym is uh, easy to, to pronounce. So the main objective of this project uh, is to provide safe, locally sustainable and accepted ways of water supply for the Mediterranean agriculture by exploiting the possibility to use non-conventional water resources. So we will focus, we are focusing on uh, treated wastewater and the salted water. The Fit for Use project is, um, uh, was funded by the Prima program that uh, is supported by the Horizon 2020 uh, program from the European Union and is a small project, 2 million euros of, of budget and um, involving seven countries, partners, nine partners from seven countries in the Mediterranean area. So not only Europe, but also uh, the entire Mediterranean basin. So we have partners from Italy, Spain, France, Greece, but also Israel, Tunisia, and, uh, and Turkey. This is a three years project. We are in the last three years, but the, the project uh, 
uh, is being to be extended for uh, uh, six months more due to the COVID. So we will have still uh, one year and a half to complete the, the, the activities. I'm the coordinator of the project from the University of Bologna. And you can see in the map the, the name of the partners involved. So we have uh, ESME, like uh, Ecofile in France and BioAzul in Spain. We have University, University of Bologna, University of Politecnica delle Marche in Italy, National Technical University of Athens in Greece. We have uh, uh, University, Istanbul Technical University in, uh, in Turkey. We have uh, big companies in Israel like Mekorot, that is the main uh, manager of uh, the entire cycle of water in that country. We have uh, governmental institutions like uh, uh, the National Institute for Environmental Protection uh, in Italy. And we have also uh, a well-known institution in, in Tunisia like uh, the um, uh, University of Tunis El Manar. So the keywords of the project are for sure related to agricultural sector. So we want to exploit and support the use of non-conventional water in the irrigation domain, but also for aquifer recharge. The project is, um, is uh, built under three pillars. So you can see here the, the concept of, of the project. The first pillar is related to the innovation within the treatment technologies. We, we, we means for in, in treatment technologies, technologies that are able to treat both uh, wastewater as well as uh, salt, uh, saline, and brackish water. The, the idea is, of course, to use this treated water for irrigation or for aquifer recharge. And uh, one of the main innovation is also to combine in the treatment train uh, also natural treatment solution like constructed wetlands, as well as intensive treatment. In intensive treatment. So we are working on the combination of this solution to, to provide the useful and effective solution to treat wastewater for reuse it in, uh, in the irrigation domain. Of course, within the new regulation approach from European Union. We work also on, this, on the optimization of the, of the salination systems as well as for the brine recovery. The second pillar is related to the application of these treated non-conventional water resources and the application into for irrigation using drip irrigation systems as well as fertilization, irrigation and also to exploit the possibility to work on aquifer recharge with these uh, non-conventional resources. Uh, the third pillar is uh, named assessment and regulation, and it is devoted on the uh, increasing uh, of public acceptance on the use of this non-conventional uh, water. And uh, we work within this pillar with the policymakers, farmers, citizens, market operators, and uh, we established a very well tool for the stakeholder engagement. So these are the, the, this is the main infrastructure of, of the project. It is divided into nine work packages. What we have achieved uh, right now, until now, we have uh, several pilot plant installed and uh, operating at the moment. We have pilot plant uh, in France, in Italy, in Greece, in Tunisia, as well as in Israel. Uh, we are designing, we have already designed integrated pilot systems, so combining different technologies we are developing in a unique prototype. We have developed also a simulation platform able to predict the, the, and simulate the, the framework and the, and the behavior of these uh, uh, treatment tools, the, this treatment train we are working on. We started the irrigation test with the treated wastewater or the salted water. We drafted also guidelines for irrigation and aquifer recharge, guidelines for fractioners. We are working, we, we drafted the first version of a water reuse safety risk management plan for the use of treated wastewater in agriculture. That is one of the main products of the Fit for Use project. 
we developed a multi-stakeholder and multi-level platform for the engagement of stakeholders. And uh, we are organizing uh, uh, the main events within the project that are named the Water Reuse Days. Unfortunately, the first last year was uh, totally online due to the COVID situation, but this year we are working on um, an upgrading of this organization. What we expect in the future, we, we expect to have validated novel cost efficient technologies for the treatment of these non-conventional water resources and for the safe use. We expect to have guidelines for sustainable irrigation and agronomic practice to ensure risk control uh, while using this non-conventional water. We expect to have guidelines to structure the water reuse safety risk management plans in the Mediterranean countries. We are working on future scenarios for the non-conventional water resources uses in the Mediterranean area. And we are establishing water reuse forum, forums in the consortium countries. And which, which, which are our needs at the moment? We for sure need collaboration and data from a real scale baseline scenarios uh, data to, to implement these scenarios related to the project technologies. And we also need the involvement of all the relevant stakeholders in the Mediterranean regions. What, what we can offer within the project consortium, we have several pilot plants in different countries of the Mediterranean regions. We have results related to a long-term monitoring of this uh, treatment solution and treatment train, the combination of this uh, different treatment solution. We have this simulation platform, I said before, for further result analysis or to be applied to different scenarios. We have the multi-stakeholder networking tool already ongoing. And we want to produce at the end of the project different guidelines uh, able to to help for risk minimization and assessment during the use of these non-conventional water resources. Of course, in the few time I have for, to present the project, I, it's not possible to show you all the different work packages and results already achieved, but you can follow us in the website, in the Facebook account, the Twitter account, LinkedIn account, and also we release it, you find it in the website the second newsletter of the project that is focused specifically on the pilot plants that have been designed, built, and that are operating within, uh, within the project. So Richard, I think I was on time. So thanks a lot. And I'm here for any question. Thank you very much, Attilio. Uh, thanks again for a, a very, very clear, lucid description of a very, very necessary action as indeed uh, all of the examples that we're hearing are. Um, and uh, also I would like to just say that, you know, uh, I'm very, extremely aware of how projects um, uh, throughout the last two years have been affected by, by COVID and that very often uh, original plans have had to be changed. And I never cease to be impressed by the way that uh, project consortium uh, are able to adapt to the new situation and to continue their work equally. So congratulations for that. It's now my pleasure uh, to uh, introduce on behalf of the initiative Med for Water, uh, Philippe Corral. And Philippe uh, holds a doctorate in water management from Cranfield University. Uh, he has a master's in civil and environmental engineering at Imperial College London and also has a DMS from the Nottingham Trent University. He's both an engineer and a social scientist, which is uh, an excellent combination in the needs of the 21st century. His professional experience are on the international market as a senior researcher, both in Europe, in the Middle East and North African region and in Africa itself as an export manager for wastewater treatment works and as a subsidiary director for a, uh, an SME. He's also worked in war zones and in post-conflict areas as a drinking water program manager for humanitarian NGOs, which I think is something that should be really, truly highlighted. His thesis explores which type of stakeholder participation is perceived appropriate for which type of water-related challenges, societal complexity within the context of the EU Water Framework Directive, governance, 
and conflict resolution, an extremely interesting approach. Philippe, over to you and welcome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Richard. Uh, I would like to, uh, first of all, to uh, thank um, Faster and especially uh, Leonardo and uh, Matteo for the invitations and making uh, this happen. Uh, and uh, also uh, to thank the person that made a, a summaries of uh, who we are. There is a real talent in uh, in combining the informations to make such a nice speech. So I'm going to share with you uh, my uh, my screen, expecting that uh, yeah, everything works uh, fine. So I'm going to uh, to present some results of a project, uh, Matt for Water. There is a, uh, a spelling mistake, uh, an A disappear for E. In the in the synopsis in the documents, but the project uh, original name is Mad for Water. It was a, a, a project that uh, took place between uh, 2016 and 2019. Um, the the project was uh, financed by uh, H uh, 2020 under the coordinations of uh, Dr. Uh, Dario uh, Frascari from uh, Uni Bologna. The um, overall objective of the project uh, was to develop an integrated set of technological and management instruments to enhance wastewater treatment and wastewater reuse for irrigation in agriculture. <clears throat> so there is, um, uh, like in many of these, uh, of these projects, uh, there is a, a technological, a political or legal aspect and uh, a transdisciplinary uh, element. And uh, we are going to dig into this trans transdisciplinary uh, dimension. Our questions from, from the team I was leading in this project was in fact to question wastewater, wastewater reuse for irrigation. Is it, is it more an unconventional or an unwelcome resource? Um, well, in fact, it's quite a lot of time that people are working uh, on the, the reuse of, uh, of uh, treated wastewater. Uh, the FAO has, has a figure that uh, around 80% of uh, the vegetable, not the, the crop, but the vegetable in, uh, in the developing world uh, are uh, being treated at some point by some sort of uh, wastewater and sometimes untreated wastewater. And if you look at the Nile, there is a certain point where it's, it's definitely um, uh, wastewater. So, um, there is a resource, and uh, this resource is sometimes uh, not well understood in terms of management, in terms of consequences. And uh, the questions in these uh, work packages was to uh, study what are the perceived barriers so that uh, are negative to promote the use uh, of uh, treated wastewater and what are the, the drivers? So the positive, the promoters, the positive elements for the reuse of uh, treated wastewater. The specific results here uh, are for the uh, workshops are based on workshops uh, held in uh, Tunisia. Uh, the similar studies has been conducted in uh, Morocco and, uh, and in Egypt. So the, the methodology, uh, we are, implementing a participative methodology uh, where we are looking uh, for the identifications of a list of factors that can favor the drivers and boost uh, water management or to refraining uh, to refrain it so this is a participative uh, methodology and uh, we have uh, involved uh, 34 uh, policy makers uh, local managers, representative of farmers. And we organized uh, two uh, workshops. The first one was to uh, elicit, so to ask what in your opinion are the different factors, positive or negative, that uh, will enhance or refrain the use of uh, treated wastewater. And we've done that according to the PESTEL framework. You probably know the PESTEL framework. So looking at policy, economy, social, legal, institutional, and uh, uh, dimensions. So we've done that in uh, small groups. Uh, we had different uh, lists, uh, stakeholders presented, and uh, we discussed. And then 
uh, after treatment, we end up with a series, sorry, with a series of uh, factors. So absence of agricultural policy, absence of financial policy in agriculture, absence of uh, integrated water resources policy specifically. Then there is economic uh, factors, uh, lack of a specific uh, budget or program for uh, irrigations that is uh, specifically uh, suited for uh, uh, irrigation with the treated wastewater. So there are some economical, but also uh, technical uh, factors. Uh, social factors, uh, resistance from the consumer, but also resistance from uh, supermarket or gross handler. So we have a, diff a very long list. And we try to uh, to see them to what extent the list is uh, the each factor has a strong, medium or weak impact. But then we organized another consultative workshop uh, to uh, uh, discuss each of these uh, factors. And we want to rank these barriers and drivers uh, against each other. So uh, the questions we, we have there on these barriers is which barrier have a strong impact uh, on the other one? Which one has, has a leverage effect? Can we organize, can we prioritize the barriers? And which one is strongly influenced by others and is actually a weak barrier to overcome? So over here, you, you have two types of index, in fact, because it's relative importance on each other. And the EU E4, for example, represents the economical barrier number four, E1. And then we have also the I, institutional barriers, the T, technological, and the P, uh, policy. And we've got uh, so four type of barriers, but let's, critic, let's um, uh, look at the critical uh, barriers. So the barriers that will have a strong effect and will also be, uh, be impacted. And we have a set of, in fact, sociological and uh, political uh, barriers. In fact, uh, the, the sociological and political uh, barriers are, uh, come, are stronger than the technological barrier. And among the strategic factors, there is a lack of agricultural policy that specifically uh, target and consider the positive and negative element of treated wastewater resources. There is also an issue with uh, financial resources, especially for uh, tertiary treatments that is being developed in so many projects, in so many pilots, but uh, it's not uh, yet uh, well accepted in all uh, standards and norms. There is um, issues uh, related to uh, health, uh, notably health for, for farmers. There is a risk, uh, but this risk should be considered uh, for the, the users of a treated uh, wastewater. So by the irrigants, the farmers. And that will also uh, may uh, uh, lower the resistance of farmers. So we also have a lack of coordination between institution, institutions. Uh, often uh, there is the in workshop uh, there is you know, there is no real coordinator. There is no conductor. Is it a, is it an issue from the Ministry of Water Resources? Is it an issue within uh, Ministry of Agriculture? Is it an issue within uh, trade? trade and industry, because all the product at the end needs to be uh, sold and complied to uh, certain standards. So here we have uh, identified uh, some uh, strategic uh, farmers. There is uh, far more development of these farmers in a, in a, white, uh, in a white paper forthcoming. And um, what came out as a possible uh, routes to uh, open uh, the initiatives to address uh, these barriers is to promote sustainable pilots. The more pilots there is, the more farmers, the more uh, researchers, uh, the more uh, institutional civil servants uh, can see the benefits and the risk and how we can tackle the risk. But for pilots, uh, we need also to, uh, and it goes along, to develop uh, living labs. This is in the Levy Labs that we create 
uh, innovative uh, solutions. And uh, for these living labs, you, we need to involve uh, institutions and uh, private partners. So I hope uh, I uh, was clear enough on the, these issues uh, that refrain the overall uh, reuse of a treated wastewater. Thank you very much for your understanding. Thank you very much, Philippe. And it's a very important message which I've given about the, the question of being inclusive rather than exclusive, of involving all institutions and all possible partners right through the quintuple helix. So I thank you for that very much. Uh, we will move straight on to a project called uh, Kefemak, which is being presented by Gustavo, Gustavo Perez uh, from the Autonomous University of Barcelona. I know Gustavo well. I also know that he always leads projects with extremely complicated names. Uh, it's been my pleasure to be involved with some of them. Uh, and uh, uh, also I've had the opportunity, in fact, of being various times in Tunisia itself uh, with uh, working in collaboration with Gustavo. Gustavo himself holds a doctorate in chemistry, uh, analytical chemistry, applied to the research on environmental availability of heavy metal in polluted sites and in the influence of anthropogenic contribution at the University of Barcelona in Spain. He works as a project manager at GTS, which is the group of separation techniques in chemistry, and he's responsible for analytical testing services for the group, uh, which the group offers to both SMEs and public administrations. He also is uh, very much involved uh, in the coordination and the management of different uh, research and development projects at many distinct levels. Uh, he is uh, an excellent speaker. He's a very interesting person, and he's also been doing some extremely important work over the last few years. Gustavo, it's a pleasure to introduce you and welcome and over to you. Okay, Richard, thank you so much for for the opportunity of being here also for Faster Project. Let's say that today is uh, uh, some kind of chimera due to the problem that we have at the university due to the cyber attack. So we have returned to prehistoric uh, ages. So it's uh, really difficult to develop uh, anything nowadays here at our university. And now I'm gonna try to, to make some provocative uh, discussion uh, linked to the project that we are coordinating. Uh, it's a project uh, funded by Prima. We started in 2020. We engage uh, 11 partners from eight different uh, countries. And we are trying to capitalize best practices, connecting with Nexus stakeholders, uh, encourage sustainable public uh, private uh, people partnerships, and monitor which are the hindering factors that uh, doesn't allow to advance on the university business cooperation. Because we have realized that later on, you will uh, observe uh, that there exists a, a problem so far uh, with the, the funding of uh, different opportunities. So we are trying to develop an interactive platform uh, to promote the cooperation between the stakeholders of the Web Nexus. And of course, uh, try to uh, give them more visibility through the different outreach uh, activities. So the problem so far is that uh, so often, uh, you already know, you have been discovered with these uh, participatory approaches, is that uh, at the end, uh, the research and the private sector used to follow uh, opposite roles, especially in the, in the Southern Mediterranean. And uh, what we perceive with different interviews, interactions with the, the Web Nexus the stakeholders uh, um, is that there is a lack of communication uh, between both uh, sectors. And they used to be uh, real not well engaged. Uh, there is a low involvement because the private sector mostly perceives that there are low interests and low incentives to, to participate. And there is a need of a better connection between uh, both the walls at the different uh, stages of development of uh, any innovation. And on the other side, uh, the, the funding agencies, they uh, have not, uh, uh, let's say, evaluated in deep the, the impact of the projects that they fund. They don't have key indicators in terms of a, which is the economic impact. So we uh, considered during this project to, okay, let's say that we are going to uh, start mapping projects from different funding agencies, try to gather information, 
try to gather the inputs, the outputs, the, the outcomes that they generate, try to identify, classify, and match, and make a, a, an impact analysis. Uh, let's try to extract the key information and try to apply our econometric model, try to understand which is the real impact, and try to benchmark and generate a catalog of these projects. The problem that we have faced so far is that the projects don't use to generate this kind of information that could be employed to understand which is the real impact. So they just sometimes limit to the publication to generate a, a product or a pilot plant, but they don't have these key indicators that allow to proceed with this benchmark. So we are in the, in the activity of gathering this information uh, project by project. We were expecting that at least at the funding agencies, they were able to gather this information, but they already realized that maybe during the interim reports, they need to change the mindset and try to start gathering some key information to understand the impact of the funding that they are providing. So we have developed an interactive platform that allows to a plethora of uh, different types of users to introduce the data, to proceed with the benchmarking, to understand which are the impacts. They have different profiles, different roles, different outputs that they can obtain from this interactive app platform that at the end try to connect, try to level, try to let test and validate the, the results, of course, uh, always wanting uh, 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 the, the ownership and also uh, providing sustainability for this uh, future activity of the platform. Simultaneously, we are offering the, the, the possibilities to uh, uh, support the, the technology transfer, try to uh, bridge the gap with the, with the market for those identified uh, solutions that are unable to to reach through different uh, support activities that we're organizing within the, the project through uh, hackathon activities and go to market and always uh, supported by dissemination and communication activities. So in terms of uh, success, we have already developed the, the platform, it's online. We have engaged more than 600 web nexus and users, mapped more than 300 projects. Uh, more than 50 uh, project owners have uh, been participating in our activities. We have cataloged so far 10 best practices within the web Nexus. We have a PIPA methodology being applied to, to the MAPED projects, organized uh, uh, Innovation Week. And we want to uh, highlight here the, the establishment of a memorandum of understanding with a, a, a ENI CBC Med project, Next Labs that is offering the possibility for different uh, technologies within the web Nexus, uh, testing, innovation, and incubation vouchers for uh, further development. It's included within the uh, Next Labs project website. So if you, have, uh, you want uh, more information, you can access that. And what we foresee is to increase the figures that we have already reflected here, increase the number of end users, of project mappers, of project owners, of uh, uh, the catalog of uh, best practices, trying to multiply the, the, the methodology to, uh, uh, to promote employability uh, and generate a series of uh, uh, synthetic uh, country reports and the uh, uh, innovation weeks. So this is the, the, the perception of the, the, the IHAP so far. So you can check it access on, on the website for the different uh, possibilities offered. And the opportunities uh, uh, for networking we need more projects with more uh, concrete economic data to um, apply the, uh, the, the model that we have to understand the, the trends. And uh, of course, uh, try to identify those feasible and repl replicable uh, practices uh, to ensure that there is a benchmarking between the practices to uh, ensure that uh, we can engage uh, people uh, looking for, for jobs with these uh, 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 best practices involve additional uh, web nexus stakeholders and what we can offer is the i have platform for the matchmaking dissemination the job bank the mapping tools uh, proceed with a functional uh, benchmarking of the identified projects catalog them uh, generate this strategic plan and increase the employability uh, of the human resources and that's all from our side thank you very much gustavo interesting as always and very important as well that you've been talking there about the WEF nexus, the, the connection between water, energy and food is absolutely essential. And it's certainly something that I think all of us are aware of, but sometimes a lot of us forget in our day-to-day -day work. So the next person who I'm going to be presenting is uh, the person who will be representing the Soildarity, not Solidarity, the Soildarity project. 
uh, which will be presented by Cristina Cruz from the University of Lisbon. Uh, Cristina uh, holds a PhD in ecology and plant systematics from the University of Lisbon, and she is currently leading the plant soil ecology research group of, and I hope I say this correctly, the CE3C. She is a lecturer of plant biology at the University of Lisbon, which is one of my favorite cities. Her current research is driven by three overarching objectives, to maintain long-term ecological experiments in order to collect data on the response of Mediterranean ecosystems to changes in resource availability in time and in space. Secondly, to understand the role of soil ecology on plant productivity and eco and agro system sustainability. And lastly, to engineer the rhizosphere of crop plants in order to obtain oh, high stress finished. tolerant plants with increased nutrient use efficiency and nutritional value. She's the project manager of the Horizon 2020 funded twinning project, Soil Darity, which she is now going to describe. Welcome, Christina, and over to you. Okay, thank you very much. It is a, a pleasure to be here and thanks for the opportunity to present to present our project. I have to apologize because the, the template <laughs> didn't want uh, uh, to, uh, to open and I'm using a, um, a previous version of the template. So uh, Solidarity is is a twinning project. Uh, the, the aim of Solidarity is uh, uh, to bring up and to boost the capacities of the uh, Lisbon University in uh, subjects related with soil research. And we team up uh, with, uh, you know, uh, from Belgium, uh, Ghent University and Miguel from Israel. Uh, it has been uh, quite a, a pleasure uh, to work uh, in this consortium. Uh, we started uh, just uh, the one year ago, and as you may understand, uh, we were terribly uh, impacted by the COVID. Only yesterday, I uh, had a, a live meeting, uh, a live meeting with our Belgium uh, partners. And at the moment, I'm in Belgium for our uh, first uh, um, mobility program. So we have two, two kinds of uh, uh, objectives. In the short term, we want to implement a methodological framework uh, that integrates uh, transfer, uh, knowledge transfer and builds up partnerships. And uh, we have been working very hard on these objectives, uh, putting up uh, sub and submitting several uh, proposals, uh, some of which were not uh, approved and some are under evaluation. And uh, as a long-term uh, objective, we want to encourage invest investment technical cooperation, a policy and into education awareness uh, and to promote target soil research. We really want to highlight the central uh, function of soil in our lives and uh, ecosystems and uh, uh, even our daily lives. We cannot forget that our food comes uh, from our soils. As I mentioned before, this uh, uh, project is focused on knowledge transfer from the other partners uh, to uh, the Lisbon University. But it has been a very interesting and very rewarding to uh, see uh, that uh, what we are profiting the most is the differences and the complementarities among the partners and not exactly what we have in common. What we have in common is good to establish a common language, but our differences are uh, giving us uh, more creativity and promoting our ideas, discovering, for instance, uh, the um, advantages of combining uh, precision farming, agriculture, and soil ecology. Uh, so, uh, this uh, has been a very important and uh, building this trust zone among partners and uh, uh, giving uh, the uh, sustainable uh, uh, links uh, to promote uh, networking activities and even uh, uh, the 
having other objectives uh, 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 apart from those of the project uh, that uh, will somehow create the legacy of this project has been a very, very uh, interesting. So we have a multidisciplinary uh, approach underpinning the capacity of building activities. We want uh, to uh, create uh, uh, a research and a soil uh, understanding uh, that uh, provides us a more resilient and sustainable managing, managing resources. And this is a, a relation between what we know about uh, the way soil functions and the impact that soil management has on this. And this is certainly a common dominator among uh, solidarity and faster. One of the scopes of solidarity is also to trigger new partnerships agreements with other organizations and increase the ability of partners to participate in international initiatives and projects aggregating knowledge on sustainable agricultural practices, consolidating competences of young researchers and women, and fostering research staff international exchange in the field of agriculture-related sciences. So this is uh, really a common uh, ground for the projects uh, that have been presented and uh, that we also share and uh, are uh, very pleased uh, uh, to, to have the opportunity of uh, uh, interact with them. So our organization, we are organizing meetings for building this common understanding of our objectives and research interests. And of course, we would be very pleased to uh, uh, have the opportunity to invite you for these activities and to share some of our progresses with you. So thank you. Thank you very much, Cristina. Uh, muito obrigado. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, thank you for, for that again. Very interesting and again, very necessary information which you've given to us. We come to the last speaker of the morning, uh, who is Sondos Nijomi, who will be describing the Global Water Partnership, uh, what a lot of you will probably know as GWP Med and their program. Um, Sondos, and again, Sondos, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, holds a Bachelor of Science in Agrofood Engineering and is a PhD in Nutrition and Public Health from the French Institute of Research for Development in Montpellier. Um, she uh, also has a background in agronomic sciences. She served for one year as assistant researcher providing lectures for engineering students at INAT. Among her professional engagements, she's worked for over three years in the Sustainable Development Project Medina, supported by the French National Research Agency, uh, assessing dietary and nutritional shifts and related environmental changes in the Mediterranean, addressing aspects such as land use and degradation, water scarcity, scarcity environment pollution, biodiversity loss, and climate change. Sondos has also liaised with community leaders and contributed to mobilizing both public and private sector resources. So Sondos, you are very welcome and over to you. Thank you, thank you very much and thank you for having me today. Uh, greetings from Tunisia. Um, I'm Son Sunjumi, Program Officer at GWP Med and at the same time Project Manager of uh, GEMWED Project. Uh, Jamwet, it's um, a project called the Conservation and Sustainable Development of Coastal uh, Wetlands uh, with High Ecological Value, the case of Ghar al Melah, Tunisia. Uh, Ghar al Melah, it's a wetland area known for its ecological uh, richness and uh, its Ramsar wetlands, and also the first Arab and North Africa city, in fact, to, uh, to, uh, to be organized as Ramsar city. However, this uh, wetland is uh, facing developmental pressures, particularly under climate change impacts. Um, I would like to highlight also uh, that in this uh, area, economic activities are mainly related to tourism uh, and uh, coastal fishing and also agriculture. Uh, Jemwet aims to uh, assess economic, social, uh, cultural, and ecological development in Ghar al-Melah. And, um, 
we have applied principles of the integrated methodological framework for uh, IWRM, integrated water resources management, and uh, integrated coastal zone uh, management. Um, uh, and the project uh, aims at, at uh, strengthening uh, governance and also local capacities for ecosystem uh, ecosystems monitor and, uh, and management. Uh, we aim also we aimed also to promote the sustainable use of water resources and to contribute um, fighting pollution and also assist strengthening tra traditional um, farming practices uh, with support of mother uh, mother foundation uh, the genuine project is um, was implemented under the lead of uh, the lead of uh, the VF North Africa and in partnership with the GWP Med and uh, with other partners. Uh, the first phase of uh, Jamwe took place from 28 uh, until uh, September 2021. And uh, within this framework, uh, GWP Med, in fact, was responsible uh, for, uh, for two activities. Uh, the train, the first one was the training and coaching of local youth to develop their green jobs ideas and the application of um, the second one is the application of an integrated natural resources management system to uh, support uh, local farmers with the, their irrigation needs. Uh, so uh, we, uh, our methodology and approach uh, for um, uh, this, uh, this activity, in fact, smart irrigation activity provided technical support to local farmers in, um, in order to uh, optimize the use of water for irrigation. And we adopted uh, a methodolog methodological approach using um, an ICT uh, system, uh, ICT information and communication uh, technology for uh, sustainable farming systems. And uh, jointly with the local partners, uh, we have uh, selected uh, uh, six plots in the public irrigated perimeter. Um, I would like to mention uh, quickly the, the local partners we and regional partners. We have worked with the Regional Commissariat for Agriculture Development, CRDA Desert, uh, and the Water Users Association of uh, Ouzja and Ghar al Melah. Uh, also, the Agriculture Land Agency, AFA and uh, the um, Territorial Unit of Extension Services, CTV. Uh, also, the Regional Department of, uh, of Irrigated Perimeter, uh, EPE, and uh, uh, the Regional Union of uh, Agriculture and Fisheries, uh, URAP. Uh, so, jointly with the local partners, we have selected, the, as I indicated uh, uh, previously, uh, six plots in the public per irrigated perimeter, and um, we have mobilized the key stakeholders to uh, uh, to uh, to install uh, the ICC systems. Uh, the ICT systems uh, was composed of a weather station to measure uh, solar radiation, air temperature, uh, air, uh, air rate of humidity, wind speed, etc. Also, we have installed sensors for measuring soil moisture and soil uh, temperature. Uh, we have installed as well uh, pulse water uh, flow meters and solenoid valves. Uh, and uh, gateways for uh, real-time data transmission with the recording of data uh, and uh, a data storage uh, platform. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, also that local partners were associated uh, since the early stage of the activity, and uh, they contributed to the field visits, to uh, to uh, to and uh, to the verification of the GIS database layers. Um, together uh, with the local partners, we have identified the capacity building the needs of farmers and uh, key stakeholders um, to ensure the sustainability of the activity. And it was like a, a learning by doing approach um, that uh, we followed throughout this activity. Uh, and of course, the objective was uh, to enhance the capacities of the key stakeholders and uh, farmers. Uh, so we provide the trainings aiming to develop their uh, essential uh, skills. Uh, what we have achieved uh, during the, uh, the GEMET project, uh, project GEMET in fact has success successfully concluded the activity of uh, smart irrigation, and we have monitored crops like potato, uh, pepper and grapes, uh, insect plots, and uh, the calculation in fact of um, 
the irrigation doses was uh, performed uh, using the water balance model Mavia. Uh, this work was done also jointly with the National Institute of Ag uh, Agro Agronomy Sciences, INAT, in Tunisia. And instructions uh, for irrigation were sent regularly to farmers by uh, phone calls. Uh, I must uh, mention that the results show an improvement not only for water use, but also for production. Um, also in the framework of this activity, we have created a web platform called the GIS Web Mapia for irrigation alert. Uh, the main objectives of this platform were to um, are to establish a GIS comprising the different data layers uh, required for the calculation of the water balance, also to estimate irrigation water needs uh, based on the MAPIA software, um, with the main objective to issue irrigation real-time uh, alerts for each plot for uh, to each farmer. Uh, also, I would like to mention that uh, the platform interface uh, uh, offers uh, multi-level access rights and take into account the real-time data measured on the field. So our key stakeholders, our partners are able to access to this uh, platform. Um, on another side, we have uh, provided capacity buildings to partners for effective partnerships and uh, to promote their uh, commitment and uh, involvement uh, in this project. Uh, we have provided trainings on the operation of IC system, on the use of developed GIS uh, web uh, MAPIA platform, uh, how uh, uh, on the maintenance of equipment. Also, um, we, uh, together we have created a GIS data database. Um, and the following the success of the pilot activity, um, what we foreseen uh, that we uh, replicate and scale up uh, this, uh, this um, experience. Uh, therefore, in fact, we have brought together key players and decision makers from the local, uh, regional and national uh, central level to discuss how to bridge in fact the gap between a research and um, and development for a valorization of ICT in agriculture and sustainable water resources management. Uh, also, uh, we have discussed uh, together how to promote the replication of Gharel Melh experience and um, what we need in terms of technical uh, financial uh, mechanisms uh, for uh, its scaling up. Uh, how to use maybe the annual budget a line of the extension services of the regional commissariat of agriculture CFDA, for the replication of uh, of this uh, experience um so we need in fact to 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 be able and in order to scale up success, this successful pilot experience we need to mobilize resource uh, resources including uh, accessing uh, a range of um, resources rather than just uh, financial resources and also to explore different uh, financing uh, pathway, pathways um, we need also to build a network from a wide range of resources, uh, resource providers. Uh, we need also to establish mechanisms to facilitate resource Wait mobilization for development, uh, uh, including, in fact, the role of um, uh, uh, the role of networks uh, of national, uh, regional, and also multinational development uh, banks. Uh, this is why we need also to promote the public-private uh, partnerships and their implications to, uh, to be able to scale up uh, exper experiences like this. Um, we need also to bridge the gap between research and development uh, to promote uh, ICT in agriculture and sustainable water resources management. Uh, and of course, when we talk about networking, uh, we talk about the necessity to disseminate uh, information. This is why we through the platform we offer uh, to, uh, to, uh, to facilitate the communication and uh, to disseminate uh, the information. Uh, uh, the networking can, can serve as well as an invaluable tool in, uh, in this effort to communicate the information across a wide uh, audience. And uh, through also this, uh, this, uh, this pilot experience, 
we, uh, we, we uh, as I mentioned, we aim to enhance the use of ICT in the agriculture sector in other regions uh, in Tunisia uh, and other, uh, other, um, other uh, plots. Um, thank you for your attention. I try to be brief. Thank you very much, Sandras, for that uh, presentation, which again is very interesting and again uh, highlights points which are absolutely necessary.